we've taught people that no means no hesitation means no maybe means no have we told them really taught them what do you do after <laughs> Yeah. And he said, "Now, what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed yeah. to persuade them? Are you supposed to be like, uh, okay, not friends, or are you supposed to just maybe sit with them, talk to them? So it's it's what happens after consent. If it's given, if it's not even, what do you do in both of these situations?" Hi listeners, Melting Pot is privileged to be collaborating with the Zero Period for a series of conversations with their team on awareness about comprehensive sexuality education. Hi everyone, uh, today I'm in conversation with Medha Clare. Medha is a team member of um, the Zero Period and as you know, you're aware, we're doing a very, very special collaborative series, The Melting Pot, along with The Zero Period. So I'm really, really uh, happy to have Medha, um, you know, be a part of this conversation, which I think is a very, very um, important conversation. The Zero Period, uh, their main focus is on um, comprehensive uh, sexuality education, which I think uh, is a dialogue, uh, you know, the rest of the world is pretty aware of. Um, and I think it's gradually seeping into India as well. So, um, so thank you so much, Medha, for being a part of this uh, collaborative effort. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for doing this uh, podcast and talking about comprehensive sexuality education. Great. So um, it's something that, you know, we're going to focus on uh, for this particular episode is um, consent in relationships. Okay. Now that is, um, it can be very broad, right? So it would be interesting for me um, to, to just get an understanding from you as to how many, you know, because it could be um, relationships with uh, your spouse, it could be relationship with your friends, it could be relationship, you know, with um, with your peers, with your um you know, with your your schoolmates and family. a family, and to what extent um, do you, you know, when do you agree to actually give consent and for what? Right. So the so so basically the, I would say the, um, where do you draw the line? You know. Sure. Um, so like you've already said, I'm a sexuality educator with the zero period. I have been working um, within the sexuality space and uh, to be more specific in the comprehensive sexuality education space since 2018. Um, and I think this is just something that I'm super passionate about. I think. Uh, part so, yeah. So when you say you're super passionate, what I mean, there has to be some trigger, right? Um, that. I yeah, <laughs> I think uh, I think much like most other people who work in this space, it comes from, of course, the fact that we weren't given any sort of sexuality education. We just sort of like learned about our bodies, about changes, about relationships, all kinds. As we grew, we learned about it from our peers. We made a lot of mistakes. We kind of learned what was right, what was wrong, what we wanted to do. And I think that sort of, I understood over time that that journey could have been simpler if we were given any education about ourselves in advance. If we were told of what was coming ahead, I think life would have been just in general a little bit easier. Um, so that's the broader philosophy of like my working behind it. And it came um, right after when I had graduated with uh, economics honors. I didn't see myself working in the space until I exactly knew what was I doing. So went on a little bit of an exploratory journey, realized it was sexuality education that I think I needed to really fix part firstly for myself, needed to like sort of educate myself and then give it to everybody else as well. I just can't see a child growing up and not knowing what's coming ahead. I'm like, no, you need to be taught first. So yeah, so now let's talk a little more in detail about consent, 
and what uh, is your take on it? Absolutely. So um, consent is uh, my also understanding of consent came when I started exploring sexuality education as a subject. And consent happens to be a small part of everything that we talk about in comprehensive sexuality education. And the very simple understanding or like uh, the very layman understanding of consent is basically saying um, when we give permission to do something or something to happen to another person. So for instance, if somebody wants something from us and then we give them that permission to do it, that's consent. What we often end up hearing, um, no means no, that comes from like the whole conversation about consent, but I think it's so much more nuanced. Um, yeah, so um, that's essentially what I think uh, is the basic understanding of consent. Okay, and uh, so now when we kind of break it down further, um, where do we start from? Uh, from uh, when your brain hasn't completely developed and you're at school, um, at that point, um, when do you, you know, how do you kind of say, okay, like something being done to me at this point in time doesn't seem right. Do I give consent or not? So that's the first stage. Yeah. Then, you know, you get into um, when you're in a workspace, when you're in a in a relationship, when you're in a, a marriage, um, you know how and specific to sex. I would because that that's what really we're talking about, right? Yeah. So, all right. So I think um, consent is of course a practice. We need to practice consent every day, and that needs to come from within. It has to be taught. Our body kind of needs to be taught how to seek consent, how to give consent. And that essentially starts from, and I know when we have to talk about sex, but consent essentially starts when we're very young, when, yeah. you know, our parents, and for that matter, everybody else with authority kind of tells us what is going to happen to you. They, we seek permission from them. Can we do that? But at the same time, if it can be done backwards as well, if we are asked that, oh, is this something that you'd like to do? Can I pick you up? Can I kiss you? Can I pull your cheek? How often are kids are, don't want any adult to touch them, pull their cheeks, but we just go ahead and do it nonetheless. And we don't even understand as adults that that was also consent. We should have asked. If they said no, we back off because when they said no, and then we still went ahead and do it, um, go ahead and do it, they're just going to assume that, oh, no, actually doesn't mean no. We can persuade the other person. If we have more power, we can just go ahead and do it nonetheless. So that's ideally where uh, we need to start teaching consent to ourselves and to our children. So do you think this is uh, society-led? Absolutely, it's society-led. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. so many people with authority just kind of assume that they can do so many things to people people and then we as kids grow up and want to be in that position as well where we're like we tell them what you can do with your bodies we tell them what's going to happen to you and it's uh, we all want to be in that position where we don't have to ask but it should be the other way around we should really get comfortable with asking accepting both the answers no and yes and yeah just be comfortable with that where do you draw the line, um, say, preteen? I think um, where does a child say no really comes from like their own understanding of themselves. Have we actually told them that such a feeling, like if you're anxious, if suddenly you feel unsafe, you can say no. Um, so it, it needs to be very intuitive. It needs to be, you. one needs to understand their behavior. So we need to like sort of tell them that if at any point you think that this is something that you might not be so comfortable with, you can say no, or you can say something that's close to no, maybe just say maybe, because maybe also doesn't mean yes, even yeah. yes might not mean yes. If, if you're saying if your body's like, mm, that just means you don't want to do it. So that's exactly, we need to tell them that all of those behaviors 
mean that you don't want to do something and you can actually verbalize it or say it in some other manner to let the other person know that that's something that you're not comfortable with and if those boundaries are sort of broken what do you do then so i might teach them that you can say no to a certain thing if your body tells you that don't do it but if that's not respected what do you do right after so you go and tell somebody build that sort of support system for these kids to be able to like truly practice their consent as well so um that's what i would say um in three teen era so like we need to sort of teach them any activity it could be borrowing a pencil if you don't want somebody to borrow a pencil you say no the other person respects it and that's essentially where consent starts from so for anybody to then later touch you and to be for you to be able to say no i think we need to like sort of build on it from those very little small things um yeah. so just give me one example of um at the school level uh, what would you know something uh, in your um in in how you explain it to uh, the teacher who then becomes the co- sexual um comprehensive uh, sexual Sexuality. sexuality uh, coordinator Sexuality. right so yeah. um yeah. So, so just a couple of things that you know uh, that come to your uh-huh. mind that you would teach the teacher so a lot of our uh, training happens through case studies so we walk them through like those very subtle incidents or situations where we just assume that ah oh, that's okay i mean it's really not so bad you really don't have to fuss about it those sort of situations like i just mentioned somebody taking somebody else's pencil and so how yeah. often we just tell the child it's nothing to fuss about like it's okay you can deal with it but you can't you have to tell both the parties that you can't you can't just deal with it and it's through case studies like those where we try to test if they fully understood what consent means and then we sort of also like build on it that it's those little things where consent starts from and where does it really end we also sort of like try to tell them um what happens when you say no when somebody else is hears no while we've taught people that no means no hesitation means no maybe means no have we told them really taught them what do you do after <laughs> yeah. somebody said no, what are you supposed to do are you supposed yeah. to persuade them are you supposed to be like uh, okay not friends or are you supposed to just maybe sit with them talk to them so it's it's what happens after consent if it's given if it's not even what do you do in both of these situations and when we train them we put them in their own life situations i think it's really important for them to understand when consent was taken away from them when they didn't realize that they didn't have uh, agency so all of those things are sort of like taught in their own spaces and then we hope that the same then they can uh, deliver to their students as well in your part of uh, the world how hard has it been Uh, or how challenging has it been to actually get um get um you know get this training through um to the teachers how receptive have they been how receptive have the schools been where you know you've gotten yourselves involved um in in where you are and and remind me again which part of india are you in i am uh, currently in kurukshetra it's a small town in haryana north of delhi it's challenging it's challenging not just um so the challenge really comes because you know these are 40 year old people who are dealing with folks who are between 30 to 40 45 and they have grown up for 30 years believing a certain thing is true and they also then exercise and live their lives in the same manner uh like with a sense of authority they have they are now teachers they have a lot of authority they think a certain thing is okay to do and we come and tell them hold up all our 30 years of life was by the way wrong uh <laughs> we want to tell you something else so yeah. that's where the tricky part of the conversation is where we have to like really break it down for them really help them understand that why we have an myself included i think i have unlearned and then learned consent myself uh you have to like really break it down for them that why a certain thing existed how it existed 
um how we have all come to understand consent in the little manner that we have and why it's important for us to like learn it back so it's a very long conversation of like really breaking down our lives our understanding and then telling them that you're okay you're not a horrible person we But are not horrible have, yeah. yeah yeah we just got to yeah. unlearn and learn better. yeah so, yeah, um, yeah it's a process and have you made a headway in where you are um with teachers um yeah i think it's a slow process i think we're getting there um so the idea is to not really make them understand everything the idea is to start the conversation to nudge them in the direction of thinking in in a certain way and then possibly learning it over years in their own spaces while constantly you know providing them with resources really telling them where do you find the correct information from because even for myself when i started uh, within the sex ed space it was 2018 i think i have grown tremendously in these past 4 5 years so it was just it's just like little little bit of a nudge put them in that direction ask them to like view every situation from a different lens now if anything that's happened in front of them now they will look at it from the consent uh, lens of consent while otherwise they would have probably not even thought about it twice so i think that's what we're essentially trying to do we're like just trying to nudge them in a direction to think differently at the point and also yeah. coming from uh, such a young group of people uh, it must be quite uh, you know and, and like you rightly said they're all set in their ways and their thinking so bring about that uh, it not change and bringing about a new kind of understanding uh for them they they also must be like stepping back and saying why should we listen to these young people oh, how can absolutely <laughs> that, that's i think i think that's 90% of our job for them yeah. to tell we understand we are young we understand that you have a lot more experience than we do You have but a lot of the right kind of yeah. experience. <laughs> like, but you know what? We've also sort of like we've grown up. We've seen our teachers. We don't want a certain thing to happen. And older person is never going to come and tell you this thing. There's never going to be an old sexuality educator. That wasn't a thing back then. There's always going to be a young person. Nobody older than myself is coming to teach you this. So you know what? Deal with it. And that's what we tell ourselves also that there's never going to be an ideal situation for these people. There's never going to be an the school principal coming and telling them this because that person has to unlearn to that just wasn't the generation where they were thinking we yeah. have the privilege to be thinking like this so it's always going to be a young person now let's figure out how are we together going to learn so we have to like use techniques like um ask them to not call us girls we're like no we're not girls we're women we're not so very often they call us daughters or what we call it in hindi is beti to we'll start the conversations with like beti but this we're like we're not betis we are your educators you treat you treat us with yeah. respect and that's what we'll do it so this is sort of like some sort of like respect building that kind of needs to happen at every classroom that we go in um but yeah like i said it's 90% of our work really i think uh you know comprehensive sexuality education in other parts of the world uh probably is far more advanced than and and is far more um um recognized as compared to india because there are so many taboos there are so many um again it's it's pressures from society that i think um you know those influences if they can filter in as well i think i would have um also in my in a very very minute way made a difference so no, absolutely just having this conversation i think you've made your difference you were talking about it a bunch of people are even if they're just like listening to it passively i think the difference is getting made and um, yeah i think that i think you've done your part by it and <laughs> yeah, yeah hope no, everybody else you. does too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I really look forward to that, and I'm so impressed with. Uh, the, I know I have another two or three uh, conversations, and I'm so and and I had the privilege of meeting this young bunch uh, of all of you, at least most of you, and uh, I feel, 
like it's very very special and um thank you for um starting this conversation um in a country like india um and i know you it's a very uphill task for you and i know there will be a lot of challenges but i also know seeing the passion and um and the absolute determination that you will get somewhere all of you barkha and the entire team of zero period thank you so much for saying that pile i think it's it's these words that keep us going because the change is slow yeah. so i think it's it's people like you when you notice us when you see and say that our work is good that you know we're like okay maybe we're on the right path maybe we're doing the right thing we're young <laughs> it's fine so. of course you are <laughs> without doubt thank you so much meeta it's been so nice talking to you and um, wish you all the very best and let's see the zero period making leaps and leaps and you know going ahead in 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 the right direction working in the treacherous and very niche space that is comprehensive sexuality education in india the zero period depends upon donations and external funds by community members who believe in the mission and the vision of the organization if you are willing and you are able to please do donate to the crowdfunding campaign of the zero period by clicking on the link in the description thank you For more weekly conversations, do listen to Melting Pot on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts. Follow us on YouTube and on Instagram at Podcast Melting Pot. So until the next episode, this is Pile signing off.